Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on that later. I just finished making these DIY walnut and acrylic speakers for my home office, and it ended up being one of the most technically challenging projects I've done so far, but it was totally worth it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I designed and built these things, why it was so technically challenging, and if you stick around to the end, you'll get to see a secret feature that I built into them. So let's go back to the beginning. So I've tried my hand at building speakers a few times now with varied amounts of success. First with these flat panel speakers that turned out okay, and then with this badass Bluetooth speaker that I couldn't be happier with. I wanna get back into the speaker building game, but I also wanna learn more about the inner workings of speakers by building my own crossover. So the idea is to build some really nice bookshelf speakers for my home office. Now, you might be thinking, this is just a simple bookshelf speaker build. What could be so challenging about that? Well, I had some pretty lofty goals for this project. First, like I already said, I wanna gain some experience building a speaker crossover that I can potentially upgrade in the future. Second, I just reorganized my home office and now I need some eye candy for the background of my video calls. Third, a few months back, I built this 3D printed CNC router that I am dying to finally put to the test and custom speaker boxes are the perfect application for this machine. And lastly, you guys know I love LEDs, so of course these speakers are gonna feature built-in LEDs with a custom circuit board to drive them. So this project's got it all, electronics, woodworking, LEDs, and one of my favorite things on this planet, Cheez-Its. I mean, music. Music. Now, I have no experience designing speaker crossovers, so rather than diving headfirst into that and ending up with some horrible sounding speakers, I decided to pick up this C-Sharp two-way powered speaker kit from Parts Express with the intent of building a custom enclosure for it. But funny story, while I was looking up reviews for this speaker kit to see if it'd be worth buying, I came across a Zach Builds video where he used this same kit to make some insanely awesome wood and acrylic speakers with a Philips Hue light built into them. So I did what any great artist would do. I stole his idea. Okay, well, not completely. I love the wood and frosted acrylic idea, but I'm gonna give it a couple of other upgrades, which I'll talk about later. Now, I know I'm building speakers, but the first thing I wanna figure out is the electronics for the LEDs. Like I mentioned, I'm using the WLED firmware on an ESP32. It's super easy to set up, and right out of the box, it gives you the ability to control your lights from an app, a web browser, Alexa, Philips Hue, and a ton of other services. Now, one of the difficult parts of getting this circuit working is that the ESP32 has a logic voltage of 3.3 volts, but these LEDs I'm using operate at five volts. Now, it will usually work as is. You can see I've got it working right now, but the proper thing to do would be to use a logic level shifter to convert the 3.3 volt signal to a five volt signal. Now, I've never done that before, so I was surfing the web looking for examples, and I ended up finding some with the help of today's video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a prototyping and small volume production company that can make your PCB designs a reality. Or if you're like me and you're looking for inspiration, you can browse through their library of shared projects, find one you like, and order it with just a few clicks. In my case, I came across this universal WLED controller project and decided to order a few from their website. But here's the cool part. This project didn't have a pick and place file with it to tell the robots where to place the components, and I'm terrible at soldering. So I asked if they would be able to assemble them for me, and the engineers at PCBWay said, no problem, and they ended up assembling and sending me five of these boards for this project. And they don't just make PCBs either. They also offer 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. So make sure to check them out for your next project. Huge thanks to my representative Zoe and all the other engineers at PCBWay for making this project possible and for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to building those speakers. All right, so I'm going to be building the enclosure out of walnut just because I love walnut. So I've got about seven board feet of five quarter walnut here. And unfortunately I don't have a table saw. So I'm going to have to rough cut everything on my miter saw so that it fits on my CNC machine. Now, speaking of CNC machines, this is the 3D printed CNC router I made last year that was designed by Ivan Miranda, and I haven't gotten to use it as much as I would like, but this is the perfect project for it. It's not very big though, so I'll have to cut each panel individually, but the plan is to cut all the important parts on here, so the tracks for the LEDs and the acrylic panels, 
and then I'll trim it to final size again with my miter saw. It's a little bit of a roundabout way to get this done, but it should save me a ton of time not having to route the entire panel outline with the machine. All right, let's get started. All right, so I've got all of the tracks cut out for the acrylic and the LEDs, and I've got all the panels cut to size and planed down so that they fit together. Now I just gotta cut out the holes for the drivers and the plate amplifier, and we should be good to go. All right, so I am completely done cutting everything on the CNC, and I've got all these panels sanded down and planed so that they fit together. Now, I did accidentally blow out this back wall when I put this piece through the planer, which was really stupid, but it still works, and it's on the back side of the speaker, so it shouldn't be too noticeable. Now, all I have left to do is to finish up all these panels with some polycrylic top coat, and then I will cut the sides and top out of the acrylic panel and finish putting everything together. So for the sides and tops of the speaker, I'm going to be using this 3 8 inch thick P95 acrylic sheet that's frosted on one side. Now, it's a little bit more expensive, but I wanted a nice thick edge to light up with the LEDs. So I do have to cut a 45 degree miter in this, and I don't have a table saw, so I'm gonna do my best with my miter saw, but I'm not sure how it's gonna go, so wish me luck. So it was kind of hard to film what I was doing, but I read online that basically, since this stuff is thinner than water, the best way to join the two pieces together is to put them together and then let the weld on seep into the seam. This stuff also evaporates super quickly, so if you try to apply it and then put the pieces together, it may have already evaporated. It's also super important to have the two edges as smooth and flat as possible, otherwise you run the risk of air bubbles getting in your seams, which obviously doesn't look great. Okay, so I've got this one glued and setting up. It doesn't take long to set, but it does take about 24 hours to reach full strength. So while that's happening, I'm gonna grab my soldering iron and put the crossovers together. No.
One Eternity Later. 안녕하세요. Philips Hue, an infrared remote, and they have different animations, schedules, configuration options, all kinds of things. That is a ton of features, but I want more. While I was digging around in the WLED docks, which are super good by the way, huge shout out to the developers, I found mention of a sound reactive version that was way too cool to resist. So the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that the boards I mounted in the actual speaker enclosures are different than the ones I initially ordered from PCBWay. That's because I went back to the drawing board and designed my own simplified PCBs to allow me to make these speakers sound reactive. So without further ado, let's see how they really turned out. I absolutely love the overall look of these speakers. The LEDs light up the frosted acrylic nicely and the walnut, well, walnut always looks good. WLED controllers I made work perfectly too. I can configure pretty much everything about them and I can pre-program certain behaviors so I can easily put them into sound reactive mode for when I feel like having a mini disco party or campfire mode when I'm editing a video all with this IR remote. I did have to run a dedicated five volt power supply into each speaker for the LEDs because unfortunately the connectors on the plate amplifier aren't rated for the amperage required to run the speakers and the LEDs. But the left speaker would need one anyways because it's a passive speaker. Aside from the looks, these things sound amazing. It's, it's probably hard to tell from a YouTube video, but they really do sound great. The only thing I was worried about was hearing a rattle from the acrylic panels, but I have yet to hear even a tiny one. In the end, these speakers turned out amazing. I honestly did not think that I was gonna be able to pull this project off as cleanly as I did, uh, a lot of things in this project were a first for me, so I honestly expected them to look a little bit more kludged together. That being said, there were several things that didn't go quite as planned with this project, so I wanted to talk about them real quick. First off, I already talked about it, but the acrylic seams clearly aren't perfect. I don't know if my miter saw needed some fine tuning, but the mitered corners just didn't turn out super smooth, and I think it just needed to be done on a table saw. But they look good enough, and the Weld On 3 actually bonded really well, so I don't think it's something I'm gonna notice very often. Second, obviously I busted out the back wall of one of these panels when I sent it through the planer and I didn't really need to plane that face of it, but I messed up when I started the CNC program. So I was trying to clean that up and I ended up making it worse. Ultimately, it's not a huge deal because it's on the back of the speaker and since the bottoms are only attached with screws, I can always remake this panel in the future. Lastly, this isn't a cheap speaker build. The C-Sharp kit is actually incredibly well-priced considering the component quality but the best way to make a project expensive is to build it out of walnut and acrylic. I knew that when I started, but again, I just wanted to give you a heads up. If you're looking for a fun and cheap project to get you started building speakers, stick with the C-Sharp kit as is. Overall, I am super happy with how these speakers turned out. They look great, they sound great, and I'll probably never get to use them because we just had a baby. 
These speakers will be the perfect addition to my home office and they could be for you too because I'll have the complete instructions on how to build them linked in the description below. You can also find a link to both the PCBs I used in this project on PCBWay where you can order them pre-assembled or you can order the blank PCBs and assemble them yourself. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.